Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at another uh, PSX style scene I made in Unity. And it's pretty simple and I used a few pre-made free assets and some shaders and stuff to pull the entire scene together. There's also a very cool looking custom fox script and shader which is giving this um, whole scene a very cool um, like sunset vibe. It's pretty simple actually to make it. It's inspired by those uh, 90s vaporwave style uh, graphics. It's pretty incredible. So I'm gonna be uh, taking a bit of uh, time to break down the entire scene and telling you how you can make this. All the assets that are used in this video are free and all the links are given in the description so you can just go ahead and like download stuff from there and start working on it. I'll be breaking the entire scene down so the video might be a little bit uh, long but bear with me. And as from the last videos, there were a lot of complaints that I didn't really explain properly. So consider this as a newer version of it. I will be making another tutorial on how to make a PS1 style horror game. But let's just continue with this one first. So okay, first things first, um, the basics. So firstly, uh, <clears throat> you want to select your directional light and turn off all the shadows. And then you want to select all the textures and make sure that the filtering mode is set to point no filter. This is like the very basic of getting started with this kind of crisp graphics. To get started with the uh, environment, firstly what you want to do is to decide what kind of environment you want the uh, game to look like. What kind of game you want to make. So in my case, I want to make a sort of like a sunset inspired scene. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a skybox cube map from Google. You can search it. You don't need to go and get any high resolution ones anyway because <clears throat> we're not going to be using them anyway. So go ahead and search on Chrome. You might find something like this and then download it and then select it as a, a, a cube texture from here. And once you've got that, then you just want to create a new material and change it to a cube map. And then you just want to assign the new uh, cube texture that you had. And then you want to go into the Windows tab and get the um, from rendering, get the lighting tab, go into the environment and just uh, assign your newly gotten skybox. Once you do that, you should see that the entire skybox is also affecting your uh, scene as well. So you get a basic idea of what kind of scene you're going to be working with. And this is a very crucial step towards taking because this this step actually determines what kind of game you want to make and this makes it so that your placements and your entire scene doesn't look out of place and it just follows a straightforward aesthetic okay as for the shader we're going to be using this retro 3d shader pack from ishio it's completely free you can donate to the creator as well so i just downloaded the package and imported it into my unity and once you got everything, you also want to go into your um, uh, package manager and then go into Unity registry and search for post processing since this entire scene is made in the uh, built in render pipeline, not in URP. So you want to install a post processing stack from here. And I've already installed it before, so I won't be doing it. And once that is done, you also want to let me just real quick show you the Fox script that's here. I'm also going to be providing this in the description. It's uh, you can just go ahead and download it. Uh, once you have the fox script just attach it it should get everything done and now we're gonna set up the uh, post processing layer on our camera so this uh, shader uses post processing layer stacks to implement the uh, dithering effect and other pixelation style effects and color depths and other stuff so you're gonna just um, go ahead and create a new layer and call it post processing assign your camera to that layer and also um, add uh, a post-processing layer component to your camera or any other game object you want but i'm just gonna add it to my camera and you want to set the uh, layer to the post-processing and then you want to change the uh, anti-aliasing from the layer option to temporal anti-aliasing ta and then just crank up the sharpness and adjust these other things such as jitter jitter and bleeding and stuff according to what i'm doing right over here on the screen this actually allows you to get that uh, sort of like sharp edgy look crisp look of uh, playstation one style thing this actually makes it look much better i don't know how but i think this just goes perfectly with the aesthetic it just creates those edge bleeding effects and this is just the best way to do it rather than having like a separate separated um, post-processing thing injecting into your um, previously existing post-processing stack so these are the settings that i used a simple um, uh, 
ambient occlusion setting some color grading does the trick and everything else as you see here's the entire setting here's the ambient occlusion color grading and stuff and there's basically nothing else this is just basically it so now to um, add the uh, PlayStation 1 style thing you go to add effect and then you should see this new option over here and once you do that you should get this thing and from here you can already start adjusting everything if you have already properly uh, set up your post processing thing which I hope you know how to do it by now so once you do that everything should just work out eventually and you can just completely change these values I'm gonna keep the pixel ratio to default if you want then you can lower it or increase it I'm just gonna <clears throat> keep it to what it is it just makes things look uh, a little bit nicer now for the dethering effect and other things as you can see there's this color depth which as you guessed it it just controls the color depth and just creates, creates those um, uh, isolated individual layers of color thingies just I'm gonna keep it to something like this I think this looks um, a bit nice so over here we have the dithering thing so a few dithering patterns are included with this package so once you uh, <coughs> select the uh, increase the intensity and select the uh, over here you can just so select these dithering patterns you can search for them or you can just look into the package you should get these um, uh, dithering effects so if I zoom in you should be able to see these uh, dithering effects and you can just completely control them from here the in intensity and the uh, threshold and other things the pattern stuff I found out that um, this big pattern doesn't really suit pretty well so I decided to go with um, something a bit smaller so that it's not too much but at the same time the intensity is a bit so that it is easily seen so I think something like this or this works nicely. So in my case, I'm just going to select this one because it creates those uh, subtle dithering effects on the edges, not all over the screen. And these are my settings. And once I'm done with them, I think this is the end of it. And that's basically for the effects. Now it's time to set up the um, overall shaders with the textures and materials and stuff. And that should get us going with the uh, PlayStation style look. So firstly, you want to select the material of three existing um, things and you just get here, should get this uh, retro effect. And from there, you just want to select this flat uh, shading thingy. And that allows you to uh, get this um, type of look. There are other other ones as well, such as lit ones and unlit ones. But I think this is the very bare bone basic one. You can just test out the other shaders. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that in this video because that gets too long. So over here you have the uh, casual stuff such as the vertex jittering and the um, affine texture mapping. What are these two things? These are two individual things and these two things ca uh, deserve a very own video of their own if you want them, if you want me to explain them, but you can just go into YouTube and search for them. So vertex jittering actually creates this inaccuracy of vertex when you move around your camera and the affine texture mapping creates this uh, stretching of texture when you get too close to it which can be seen in the classic old PS1 games. So yeah, um, that's basically it. And there are other settings too, you can just check them out, but this is what I came up with. So now what you want to do is to uh, entirely, uh, you know, sort of um, extract all the textures or materials which are on your scene. And then you want to change them one by one from the drop down to a uh, like, you know, this PS1 thingy. And I'll be back once everything is done. Okay, so by mistake, I accidentally duplicated some of the textures, some of the materials here, but uh, this shouldn't be a very big deal. Just select all the materials which are currently in use of your scene. Just select all of them. I'm going to just go ahead and select all of them since I did this mistake. I really don't want to delete them all one by one. Just I'm just going to select these here one by one and once I do I'm gonna change them to this retro uh, material drop down and select the flat one so now what you can see, as you can see there's something wrong with our scene and it doesn't look very good it's because of the um, the amount of vertices your models have as you can see if I just slightly move the uh, fine texture map thing it just completely breaks the entire scene so to fix this what you can do is increase or add more vertices to your uh, model so this city model that I grabbed from Sketchfab is actually in Blender format or blend format. If yours is in an FBX format or, any format or anything else, you can just go into Blender and import the FBX file. But I can just double click it to open it up in my Blender. So as you can see, there aren't a lot of uh, triangles, a lot of squares here, just a few of them. So 
the way vertex jittering and affine texture mapping works is it takes the pre existing uh, vertices and then just sort of like calculates how things are going to be on top of it. So if there are not a lot of triangles to work with, it's just going to have this very uh, sensitive value to it that if you were to increase it just a little bit, it's just completely going to ruin everything up. So to fix this, you want to select your models, you want to uh, select all of them and subdivide them in your blender. So especially do this, especially for the uh, 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 the road or the road areas that you're going to be having because they are a completely just nothing but a plane. So once you do that, that should fix everything. That includes all the uh, weird texture. I mean, you just wanna, you might just want to tweak a little bit of the values. But other than that, you should see that affine texture mapping is working just fine once you've added more vertices to your models. You also want to increase the vertex jittering values to get this uh, sort of uh, vertex inaccuracy which you would see on the old PS1 games. So just increase the values to your liking. You can do this uh, individually uh, on the materials as well. But from here, as you can see from individual materials for the buildings and stuff. For the road, I wouldn't really recommend you getting it too high. But as for the buildings and the, uh, and the other props, set it up a little bit high it doesn't really matter and then from there on once that is done you can just go ahead and um, do some other tweakings just to get that final moment post-processing right so i did try some um grain effect but honestly the film grain just didn't suit pretty well with the dithering it just kind of covered it all up and i didn't really like the noise either it was kind of uh, it just kind of felt like it's gonna give me a headache or something so I decided to uh, remove the film grain because the uh, the dead ring was already there so I think it just looks nice and I really don't need to add it so this is how far we came and I'm gonna just uh, add in a few little extra details and then I'm gonna just move towards the fog so uh, I think everything just looks nice so yeah okay anyway so yeah let's move towards the fog so for the fog this is a custom script that uses the uh, depth buffer the like the z depth buffer from the camera and then calculates a gradient on the 3d space it's uh, it uses some complicated math stuff and other things but you get the idea you, you can just download the entire thing from the link in the description it's from the github page so yeah so you can have this uh, height fog this gradient height fog and the normal fog i set up i got something like this and i also enabled the fog to affect the skybox as well you can also di disable that but I found out that something like this looks uh, nicer to me in terms of what I want to actually want actually the thing to be. So the fog looks nice and stuff, and it's also pretty uh, performance friendly as well. So once that is done, uh, this is where we stand. This looks nice. This is good. So yeah, and this is basically the part where I say that congratulations, you have made a PS One's looking game, but we're not actually going to end here. We're going to actually add some more effects such as VFX, uh, VHS style filters and stuff. So on my last video, on this video, I showed how this VHS package works. So from here, we're not going to be using all of these. Firstly, we're going to be using this uh, tilt shift effect, which creates this sort of like blur line effect, which uh, is um, just what we're looking for. This creates a sort of like a bleeding motion towards the uh, end of the screen or the top of the screen gonna take it towards the end and then I'm just gonna set a little lower value to get this sort of blurry looking picture this creates that old-school bleeding effect from you get from CRT TVs and televisions and we can add some more effects to it as well just to make it look a bit more retro but I think this looks nice I'm gonna add another one here just to make it look good so here's retro effects this is a base pixelation style right 480 425 How about that what is that equivalent to yeah, actually this looks nicer yeah, the, stuff over. the bleeding edge effect if you want the bleeding effect I would just recommend you not using this 
yeah this looks better but if you want that sort of bleeding effect then i would recommend you using tail shift if you don't want it then i wouldn't recommend you using it and also for the dithering you can change it up a little bit like i said completely depends on you in my case i think this looks nice as well just um it's a bit of a hard time deciding what kind of dithering i really want on my scene it takes a lot of time just to find out what do you really want? I think this is gonna be the final product. Oh no, no, actually not. No, 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 I don't want that. Type in death. There's a good few types of deathering. Deathering. Deathering, deathering, deathering. Which one to use? That's the real question. It's a real f to deal with. Okay. Okay, I think this looks good. This looks really good. This is the type of the drink I'm gonna go with. I've selected that. Can't do shit about it. Pismon Shader. Pismon Shader. I'm gonna provide all these extra dithering effects on the description as well if you want them. So yeah, that's a uh, very basic, bare bones stuff. Very basic. This is what it is. So for the final settings, I have not used Tilt Shift. I have not used Tilt Shift because it creates a sort of list effect that sort of blurs out the top if you want to use it definitely go ahead i would recommend you using it because it just it's a pretty cool effect actually it creates this down parts as well the effects on the parts here and here i recommend you uh keeping it somewhere between here to sort of get that effect like over here if you want to use it increase the amount or decrease it i don't really i don't really care also this pasteurized effect which just creates the color and then the rgb shift which just creates this subtle shift of rgb this over here is if i increase it as you can see just subtly just creates this effect it's not very deep or anything wouldn't bother anyone definitely um, increase this to like 21 look it still look good so yeah this is the final scene that I came up with just by using all the free stuff and this is completely free you can get this from the link in the description from my patient page you can get the entire scene and everything that's over there and that's basically the entire thing thanks for watching see ya